In this video, we're going to build a drum kit from scratch in Mark of the Unicorn's Mach 5.3 sampler. The kit we build is going to have the following features. One shots, so you don't have to worry about MIDI note length for samples to play all the way through. A choke group for the hi-hats to simulate how real hi-hats open and close. Round robin samples to give our shaker a more realistic feel. And finally, multiple audio outputs, so we can process each drum sound separately in a DAW. You'll be able to use this tip to get the most out of third-party drum libraries in UFS format, like UVI's Beatbox Anthology. I did a written version of this walkthrough for the Ultimate Outsider blog. The title of that post is How to Build a Multi-Output Drum Kit in Motu Mach 5.3, and there should be a link to it in the video notes. So we're going to build a single output kit first, and then after that we'll do the multi-output setup. And um, for this tutorial, I put together a little sample pack of some samples that I recorded. And um, you can download that from the Ultimate Outsiders site. There should be a link to that in the video notes as well. All right, so first thing we're going to do is launch Mach 5. I'm running it in standalone mode right now. And let's go to Preferences and the general tab. So this, the first thing we want to do here is make sure that one shot is selected. I don't think that it's enabled by default, so you want to make sure that it's uh, checked here. And then we can close the preferences. All right, so we're going to start with an empty part. Um, we've got four empty parts up here. I'm going to delete all these others here. I'm just going to keep the, the one MIDI part that's assigned to MIDI channel one. Let's go to our browse tab here and I'm going to locate the samples from the sample pack that I put together and I think that's going to be in here there we go all right so here's our samples and we want to make sure that we're in edit view and that we can see the oscillator section here the key group mapping section and the edit section we're not going to use the modulation section in this video, so I'm just going to turn that off. Okay, so for our first sample, we're going to drag the kick sample to C1 on our keyboard. So that should be right here. All right. Okay. So what that did is that created our first layer, and we can see our layer right here and it created our first key group and named it after the sample and it put a single oscillator into that key group for the kick sample. Alright, so for the next step we're going to take our snare sound and drag that to D1. Okay, Here, I'm going to put that on D1 there. Alright. Okay. And now let's go to our list view again. I'm going to add a new layer for the hi-hats. So I'm going to press plus to add that new layer. And uh, I'm going to name my layers here. So I'll just double click. I'm going to call this first layer main drums. And call this second one hi-hats. All right, so let's go back to the Browse tab, and I'm going to drag the closed hat sound to, uh, let's see, F-sharp one. And the open hat sound is going to go to A-sharp one. All right, and now, if you listen closely, you can hear that I can play these uh, sounds really fast and they won't cut each other off. I can even play them together, um, which is not really how a uh, real hi-hat cymbal sounds. So the next thing we're going to do is set it up so, um, so we basically have a choke group where the two hi-hat sounds um, cut each other off when you play them. Okay, so we're going to go back to the list view here. 
and we're going to go down to the key group section. So we're, we're currently viewing um, the hi-hats layer. And let's go over and look for the X group column. Now, if you don't see X group, you can right click the header here of, uh, of any of these columns and you can choose X group from the list, but we already see it. And what we're going to do with each of these hi-hats is we're going to put them in X group, which stands for exclusivity group or other uh, samplers call it a choke group. So I set them both to X group one. All right, so now the hats cut each other off when you play them. All right, actually I wanna show all layers here first. All right, so now we're back on the browse tab and I'm going to select all my shaker samples by shift clicking. So I've got my first one selected already. I'm going to shift click to select all eight samples and I'm going to start dragging them over toward the virtual keyboard. I'm going to drop them on A3 on the keyboard, but before I drop them, I'm actually going to hold down the alt key. And while I hold down alt and drop them on the key, this brings up the sample drag and drop menu. And what I can do here is because of the way that I named my sample files, I can actually pick uh, note name round robin and for destination I've got my main drums layer selected and I'm gonna click OK now what we see here is we have a single key group but we that key group has eight different oscillators one for each of my different samples and down here um, for the oscillator section we see that it says cycle what this means is that it's going to cycle through each of these eight samples every time the key is triggered. So let's listen to what that sounds like. So you, you can hear the, the slightly different sounds there. Okay, so now we've got all of our samples loaded. At this point, um, we can save our kit. And what I'm going to do is use the save program and samples. And um, what this does is this saves an M5P file plus a folder with all of the samples that you use in your program. So you can have all that stuff in one place. So I'm just going to put that here in sample files. I'm going to call this um, Mach 5 kit. Let's save. All right, so next we're going to move on to making this single output kit a multi-output kit in a DAW. Now we're going to create a multi-output version of the kit. Some of this stuff is DAW specific, but some of it you know, is just uh, what you need to do inside Mach 5. But I'm going to be working in Cubase 7.5. So the first thing I'm going to do in Cubase is uh, open up our VST instruments window. And I am going to insert Mach 5 as a uh, rack instrument. And uh, when you do this in Cubase, it asks if you want to create a MIDI track. And yes, I do want to create a MIDI track to, uh, to send MIDI notes to Mach 5. Okay. Now in another DAW, you know, you would want to perform that uh, additional step after adding the plugin, after loading the plugin, and um, just make sure that you do have a MIDI track that points to Mach 5 and sends MIDI to channel 1. So now we're going to um, activate additional um, plugin outputs in our DAW. Now one thing to note, um, so I'm running 64-bit Windows and using the VST version of Mach 5. I, I've heard that some versions of Mach 5 offer different plugin versions. Um, so if you have a choice between something that's just called Mach 5 and something that's called Mach 5 multi-output, you do want to be sure you're using the multi-output version. But uh, in 64-bit Windows VST, there's only one version and it supports multi-output. But uh, assuming you have the correct plugin loaded, in Cubase, you can just click the Activate Outputs button, 
and I'm going to add four stereo channels here for the four different instrument groups we're going to um, enable in Mach 5. Okay. All right, so I'm going to delete the empty parts uh, and just leave the one that's assigned to MIDI channel 1. Okay, now I'm going to load the kit that we built in the first part of this video. So I'm going to go to Desktop, load my Mach 5 kit. All right, okay, so here's the kit. Okay, so the kit is loaded, and when I play the sounds on the kit, you can see inside Cubase, everything's coming in on the same audio channel. So that's what we're about to change. We're gonna to go to list view. All right, so we're on the list view now, and uh, both of our layers are selected. And we want to only select one key group right now because we're going to be changing things one key group at a time. What we want to do at this time is locate the output column in the key group section. Now, um, I think that the output column is hidden by default when you first install Mach 5. So if you don't see the output column in the list, just right click any one of these other column headers and uh, check it in the list and then you'll be able to see it. So now what I'm going to do is uh, one sound at a time. So we've got kick, snare, closed, open, shaker. So one sound at a time I'm going to assign them to different um, output channels. So my kick is going to go to output 2, snare to output 3. The hat sounds are going to go to output 4. Then the shaker is going to go to output 5. All right, so now when I play these sounds, we can see that they're all coming in on their own output channels. Okay, once we've set the outputs, we can save program and, and samples as. We can save another copy of this kit and uh, let's see, I will call this Mach 5 Kit Multi Output. So that you can have a single output version and a multi output version. Okay, in Cubase, I want to make it a little bit easier to know which of these VST um, audio channels um, is which. So, I'm going to rename these things right here. Okay, I've renamed the VST channels so that I can easily see which channel is which. And now I'm going to load up a MIDI clip. The uh, sample pack that I put together for this tutorial includes just a four bar MIDI uh, clip that you can use to test out your kit. So I'm just going to drag that right into Cubase here and put that on cycle. Let's hear what this sounds like. All right, so that's what the kit sounds like with no processing at all. It really doesn't sound any different um, at the moment uh, from how it sounded when it was just a single output kit. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes here and apply some processing to the kit and see what we can do now that it's multi-output. All right, I've spent a couple minutes adding some insert effects and send effects and adjusting the levels a bit, and so here's what the kit sounds like now. All right, that's it for this tutorial video. Be sure to check out our other videos and other posts at the Ultimate Outsider blog. Thanks. Bye.